Collaboration for a New Creation A 150th Anniversary Offering to Sri Aurobindo Fifteenth August, two thousand and twenty two marks the hundred and fiftieth birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo, who fought for India's freedom at the beginning of the twentieth century. Such was his powerful persona that at the end of his year long incarceration by the British in nineteen o nine, Sri Aurobindo's defense lawyer Chitaranjan Das was moved to utter these prophetic words in the courtroom. He said, Long after this controversy is hushed in silence, long after this turmoil, this agitation ceases, long after he is dead and gone, he will be looked upon as the poet of patriotism, as the prophet of nationalism, and the lover of humanity. Long after he is dead and gone, his words will be echoed and re-echoed not only in India, but across distant seas and lands. In the same year, 1909, Sri Aurobindo wrote, The time has almost come when India can no longer keep her light to herself but must pour it out upon the world. Yoga must be revealed to mankind, because without it, mankind cannot take the next step in the human evolution. Sri Aurobindo considered the establishment of a university center as one of the best means of preparing the future humanity. The mother initiated the setting up of the Sri Aurobindo University, where Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee spoke the following words at the convention called by the mother at Pondicherry in 1951. He said, We propose to start this university for imparting training to men and women in accordance with the highest standards for the purpose of participating in the great task of reconstruction of humanity. Institutions of this type are bound to fail unless we can gather men and women who not only feel on the lines that Sri Aurobindo lived, but also act up to them. It is our hope that men and women from all parts of the world will be attracted by the ideology for which this institution will stand. We need not pay attention to the quantitative aspect of the problem because we have many universities where thousands of students pass out and we do not want to see any replica of such institutions. The policy of our government should be to encourage experiments of the type being made here so that the work may be carried on without hindrance or difficulty. Later, the University Centre was renamed as Sri Aurobindo International Centre of Education, which provided free progress education up to graduation. Even today, there is no system of conventional examinations or tests at knowledge. The Centre's higher course, which the Government of India accepted and gave BA BSc equivalents in 1962. Several batches of students have entered various professions and made a mark globally. Professor Kirit Joshi, one of its early registrars, under the direct guidance of the mother, worked out the scheme of integral free progress education in detail. Since then, several other centers of education have been set up in India and around the world to give shape to a new kind of education, each with its own unique manifestation. Sri Aurobindo 
Integral Education Network. The 21st century life has entered the online space and the World Wide Web has truly empowered the ideal of human unity. The light of Sri Aurobindo envelops the entire earth, overtly active in hundreds of centers. To further intensify and concentrate our efforts, we propose to launch this worldwide network today. In the 150th year of Sri Aurobindo, 150 institutes and scholars from all over the world have come together to form the Sri Aurobindo Integral Education Network to create a new education for a new world. This is in itself a historic event as a global network of Sri Aurobindo centers and scholars has been created for the first time. By the mother. Thus, the solid foundations of thy terrestrial work are prepared. The substructure of the immense edifice built. In every corner of the world, one of thy divine stones is laid 
by the power of conscious and formative thought. And in the hour of realizations, the earth, thus prepared, will be ready to receive the sublime temple of thy new and more complete manifestation. The Courses It is no secret that different people learn differently. Research shows that people learn best when they have some control over their learning. Freedom of learning in the hands of a student with power to set one's own goals and to choose his teachers and subjects is the way forward. The role of a teacher is of a mentor, a guide, or marg darshak that shows the student where knowledge lies. A student has a choice to enroll in multiple locations with multiple disciplines according to inner calling and interest. Each course or experience would lead to some form of certification or credits. 22 digital, online, hybrid and on-site courses are being offered with many more in the pipeline. University of Tomorrow This is only a first step. Our aspiration is to create a university without walls, with a simple brick-and-mortar administrative and networking hub serving as an accreditation and coordinating hub between the various affiliated institutes and centers. The Sri Aurobindo International Multiversity shall be a global affiliating network of multi-locational, multi-dimensional, autonomous affiliated institutes and centers with equal status and powers to attain standards of global excellence. This multiversity will be housed in the Auroverse, which will be an online space encompassing all aspects of Sri Aurobindo's education, yoga and work, all aspects of knowledge, culture, ecology and economy. And its central aim would be the growth of consciousness and the change of human nature. According to the mother, an integral education would heal the schism created between matter and spirit. She felt that with some variations, this education could be adapted to all nations and reinstate the legitimate authority of the spirit over a matter fully developed and utilized. It has been over 70 years 
since this aspiration took root in the consciousness of India. Now, 2022, the year of Sri Aurobindo's 150th birth anniversary is a propitious time for its realization. An offering. Sri Aurobindo's yoga must be revealed to mankind because without it, mankind cannot take the next step in human evolution. Integral education is one way of revealing this. We pray collectively today that the Sri Aurobindo Integral Education Network grows into an international institution worthy of Sri Aurobindo's name. All the being is gathered into a well-tied sheaf made of various but harmonized flowers. The will was the hand that gathered the flowers and the tie that bound the sheaf. And it is the will that now holds it out to thee like a scented offering. To thee it is held out unweariedly, without faltering. Asma Pyam 